how do we make Kerala a global hub and a global model for post-COVID development? In fact, at a, at a webinar series which Malayalam Manorama had conducted a couple of weeks ago, there were six areas which were identified and you had eminent people from around the world, including Sam Petroda, Commodore Paul Raj, um, Javed Hassan, uh, a lot of people from India and abroad who took part, identified six areas, education, agriculture and food, healthcare and wellness, clothing, marine development, waste management and environment. In fact, it was clear that it has to be a mission mode way of uh, implementation because the, our existing systems just don't work. But one thing is clear, you know, when you talk about mission mode and a lot of people have raised concerns on that, mission mode does not mean that you actually use that to engage or accommodate retired IAS officers or other bureaucrats, providing them with huge salaries uh, by which they just live happily, retired life in comfort and with facilities at government cost. If the government of Kerala is serious about a new Kerala, they need to do what Rajiv Gandhi did in the 1980s when he asked Sam Petroda to lead the technology missions, which resulted in the telecom uh, revolution and several major government projects, including the major uh, uh, polio eradication program. Sam Petroda must have been in his early 40s at that time. What Pinarayi Vijayan, the Chief Minister of Kerala, needs to do is to identify a young energetic individual to head this mission, preferably somebody in the age group 30 to 45. It could be a professional whom he trusts or a young IAS officer who he is sure is committed to remain in Kerala for the next five years. Someone who shares his vision and is committed to make things happen based on a plan with monthly measurable milestones. The head of the mission will be asked to directly report to the CM and should be given the freedom to build a team from within or outside of government. Actually, this team doesn't need to be more than 10 or 11 people. In a way, Technopark, uh, which I was part of in its early days, in a small way was in the mission mode approach that, we, that was adopted. I was given the freedom to recruit my team, a total of 11 people, and given unrestricted access to the secretary, to the minister and the chief minister. I have said this before. Actually, Technopark is the vision of the late KPP Nambiar. Uh, you know, it was his vision that was implemented. It would not have taken off or would not have gone off the ground if it were not for the unconditional support of the then Chief Minister E.K. Nayanar and the then Industries Minister K.R. Gauriyama. Actually, the project would not even have been implemented if it were not for the, for the, for the support that came in from K.M. Chandrasekhar, who was um, uh, Commissioner Secretary Industries, and the Industries Minister who came in later on, P.K. Kunjali Kuti, and the two Chief Ministers, K. Karanagar and A.K. Antony, who gave us the freedom and who stood by me in difficult times and guided the project. What we are talking about today for the, the mission for the redevelopment of Kerala or development of Kerala post-COVID is a much, much larger, uh, larger mission. But I'm confident that, that if we take this approach and if the present chief minister is clear that he wants to get it done, he's a very strong personality. And if he puts his mind to it, it can definitely be done. The team should permit should be permitted to have access, direct access, to and to manage teams from within various departments on which the focus areas are. For example, whether it be the agriculture department or the health department or the education department, the mission will the mission, the small mission of 10 or 11 people will have teams within those departments who are working on the mission to achieve the set goals that I talked about earlier. And these teams will report directly to the mission. The mission will have for each focus sector a project implementation board. And that project implementation board will have the, uh, the secretary or the principal secretary or the secretary or the head of the department of the concerned department. It will have experts from relevant fields. Um, and that and it will actually be chaired by the head of the mission. So you may have a 30 or 32-year-old uh, IAS officer who would chair a session where you may have a principal secretary who's going to retire in two years. But that is the way it is if you really want to make that individual accountable for implementation of the program. Uh, the, uh, the mission overall, 
will have what one would call a mission implementation board, which will have the chief minister as its chair, and you will have select ministers, the chief secretary, select secretaries, and experts from relevant areas. And they will meet at least once a month to find out whether the project is going as planned, on schedule, and are they meeting their milestones. What should the mission achieve? I would say the mission will have just one simple objective to do. The mission will look at Kerala being a great place to live in and work from. If that happens, whether it be IT, whether it be new manufacturing, whether it be tourism, whether it be any of the other sectors we are focusing on, those investments will directly come because people are looking for places where it is safe to live in, where they can work without uh, disturbance, work without interference, work in a predictable manner. That is all that we need to do for post-COVID development. I think if we all work together, we can definitely make Kerala a great place to live in and work from. Thank you very much.